There are multiple protocols used to transport files over the internet. Some of them are called file transfer protocol, and we're gonna talk about those, and we're gonna talk about some other methods as well. When we talk about each of these protocols, we're gonna be using the standard template. So we're gonna show where the protocol lies on the OSI model, all the way from layer set one to layer seven. Most of the file transfer protocols are gonna be in layer seven, they're gonna be higher level protocols. We're also gonna show the port number color coded with the OSI layer, and whether it's a TCP or UDP protocol. Spoiler alert, most of file transfer protocols, or I think all of them are gonna be just TCP protocols, you know? Uh, and then the port number, of course, is assigned by the internet, assigned numbers authority, or IANA. They have system ports, user ports, and dynamic ports, so most of these ports are gonna have a system port number, which would be anything from zero to 1,023. So, our FTP or file transfer protocol is an older file transfer protocol and you know it shares the name file transfer protocol it's a protocol used to transfer files over the internet it's developed in the 1970s and it doesn't have a lot of basic security built into it a user would log into an FTP server using just a username and a password and FTP is nice because it maintains uh, connection status or maintains a state, collects information about the client or about the connection so they can use it again in the future. It requires authentication and it operates over 20 and 21. There's two different modes. You can run FTP in active mode and passive mode. In active mode, port 21 is going to be the control port, which is used to communicate with the FTP server. And then the data transfer is done over port 20. In passive mode, the server is always listening on port 21, and then data would be connected uh, once a connection is established. So that could be when it's done in passive mode, the server is always listening on 21, and then a random port number could be assigned whenever there's a file transfer in progress. Let's go ahead and take a look at some uh, traffic from a TC, from a FTP connection. So here we have FTP, and of course FTP is a TCP type of connection, so it's shown up in the light pink. And we have a request here, request user FTP to the server. So the user is requesting that the FTP connection occurs here. And then we have a response here for an anonymous logon. make this a little bigger response for anonymous logon okay send with your complete email address and password so we need the password then the response here is request pass FTP now this when you see this part of an FTP uh, communication pass FTP is then uh, followed by the password for the FTP account now this is an anonymous login so we have anonymous access granted, so we don't have authentication there. And it says there's some restrictions because it's an anonymous login. But basically, the user is communicating or establishing a TCP connection with the FTP server. Once that's established, then files can be transferred. And then files are transferred here. I believe we see, if we take a look down here, We'll see a response. We'll see file transfers in progress. And we could see that the port number that was assigned for some of these file transports was a random port number. So this was acting in passive mode because this port number was 6, 62,014. So we have a destination port 60 or 21. And then the, I believe that source port was at 62,014. If we take a look at that. Yeah, source port 62,014, destination port 21. So we know that files were transferred between those ports. So, so that's FTP in action. Pretty useful file transfer protocol is pretty helpful. It's still used today, but it's used in a different way. 
And what we do today is we have a couple options. We have file transfer protocol secure, which uses transport layer security for encryption. So instead of having that authentication process over um, unencrypted channels, now we have FTP secure, which can run on ports 20 and 21, just like FTP, but sometimes it's allocated to 989 and 990. So if you need to memorize your port numbers, you need to know 20 and 21 and 989 and 990. Just like 20 and 21, uh, 21 is the control port, where 20 would be the transfers in active mode, similar with 989 and 90, 990 being the uh, control port. Now, even though we have FTP secure, a lot of times people quickly just refer to it as FTP. They'll just say, okay, it's an FTP transfer, even though it'd be using FTP secure, which uses TLS. This is the monitor equivalent. Again, a layer seven application TCP connection. We also have secure shell. Another type of protocol used for securely exchanging data establishes a handshake process as a TCP connection, and it can be used to secure other protocols like FTP or secure copy, which is an earlier uh, version of FTP secure. It's also used to do remote configurations, it's widely used in Linux environments. Let's take a look at some SSH, as you would say, SSH. Uh, traffic here, and that's going to be over port 22. It's a TCP connection. So we have some SSH. This is SSH version 2. There's different versions of SSH. And SSH is going to, first off, we're going to establish a connection. So it's going to be a connection established between the server and the client. And you can see the destination port being 22 source port 22 destination port being a randomly assigned uh, destination port there. So once we have an, a client or a connection established, we're going to be exchanging information. And this is going to use asymmetric encryption. We have a Diffie-Hellman Diffie-Hellman protocol to the asymmetric algorithm used to help uh, secure that session. And then when we, once we have that established, we're going to have exchange of data or data being transferred through SSH. So I like to envision these, these different protocols, the different packets. So if we can look at these through like a Wireshark capture, it helps you understand what these are used for and how they're used in a real sense. It can be easy to get lost in concepts. So it's helpful to see that these are actually useful technologies. Now, along with SSH, we now have also SSH file transfer protocol or secure shell file transfer protocol, SFTP. This is different than FTP and different than FTP secure. It uses SSH to create a secure tunnel. Um, so it's, it's different than that FTP, even though it has FTP in the name. Uses port 22 to communicate, requires an SSH server to use. SSH FTP requires some advanced configuration. It's not simple to set up, but it can be integrate very well with virtual private networks, site to site virtual private networks and firewalls. It's really good for multiple files, for larger files, and it will use asymmetric encryption keys to establish and secure that, that connection. So another really helpful option there. Again, all these are layer seven TCP connections. Now, of course, we also have, if you've done you know, any internet uh, use or any like Google Drive use, or if you, you know, you've worked in a professional sense, you probably have done just file transfer over HTTP or HTTPS. It's a very, tight, very common method of file transfer where you just upload a document to a website. And that is usually done through HTTP. So we, of course, we have HTTP and HTTPS on here. HTTPS being encrypted with transport layer security. Really good method for transferring files. All these are, are excellent ways of transferring files across the internet or file transfer protocols as you were.